Dear students, so welcome to the next video lecture of your microcontrollers module. So, today we will discuss our, uh, we will continue our discussion actually uh, about this uh, memory interfacing. So, in the last class, uh, last video lecture, we stopped at this point. So, this, this slide that you are seeing right now. So, we were actually discussing about memory address decoding. Okay. So, in the last class you also saw that we had different types of memory address decoding. So, one of them is uh, using the simple logic gates okay. uh, and then you can have uh, this 74 LS 138 IC and you could also have programmable logics. So, at the very end of the last lecture we were discussing this concept of how to do memory address decoding using simple logic gates. Okay. Uh, so, today we will start discussing about how to do memory address decoding using this 74 LS 138 IC chips. Okay. So, this is, uh, this is one of the mostly wi uh, widely used address decoders that we have. Okay. So, there are three inputs A, B and C that would generate eight active low outputs from Y0 to Y7. So, each uh, output, okay, each output is connected uh, to the CS or the chip select pin of a memory chip, okay. So, allowing control of eight memory blocks together okay by a single ic chip okay so if this is your let's say microcontroller 8051 uh, and then uh, you have this uh, 74 ls 138 which is the interfacing logic ic okay um, so you have you have this let us say connectivity uh, uh, between the microcontroller and the IC and then the IC actually has 8 outputs let us say. So, this can uh, be interfaced with 8 memory uh, chips like this. Okay. So, so, in the 74 LS 138 where A, B and C select which output is activated, uh, there are also three additional inputs, okay, G 2 A, G 2 B and G 1, okay. So, of obviously, this A, B and C, uh, the, 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 the three um, inputs A, B and C will give you 2 to the power 3 or 8 outputs, okay. So, this eight outputs depend on the state of these three uh, inputs, but then there are three additional inputs G 2 A, G 2 B and G 1. So, let us see what are their functionalities. So, G 2 A and G 2 B are both active low and G 1 is active high. Okay. So, if any one of the inputs uh, this G 1, G 2 A or G 2 B is not connected to an address signal then they must be activated permanently either by VCC or ground. Okay. So, depending on the activation level. So, if it is active low then it has to be grounded, if it is active high then it, it can be connected to VCC. So, this is how uh, the logic of the 74 LS 138 looks like. So, you have three inputs here A, B and C and then three more inputs G 2 A bar, G 2 B bar. So, these two are active low and then G 1 which is active high and then they are combined by this combinational logic circuit to give you eight outputs Y 0 to Y 7. Okay. And these are the numbers of the pin actually in the original IC. Okay. So, the, the pins 1, 2, 3 corresponds to A, B, C, 4, 5, 6, uh, to G 2 A, G 2 B, G 1 and then these are the output pins. Okay. So, when you are trying to let us say interface this uh, uh, 74 LS 138 IC, okay, 
so the arrangement would be like this so let's say you can connect uh, the address lines of your microcontroller so let's say a12 a13 and a14 goes to a b and c of the input okay a15 goes to g2 a bar and then let's say g2b bar is grounded and g1 is vcc okay so you can so this is just an example so you can let's say uh, connect any of these address lines to this g2b and g1 pins also but if none of the address lines are connected to these then they have to be either grounded or connected to vcc as you saw in the previous slide uh, this particular bullet was saying this so depending on their activation level they has to be either uh, vcc or ground okay so that's what is happening for g2b bar and g1 here in this example so g2b bar is active low and it is grounded g1 is active high so it is connected to vcc g2a bar we are using it to connect to an address and that is a15 in this example okay so so the output okay so if you connect this four um MSBs of the address line to these three, uh, I mean these three and this G2A bar, then your Y4 will be actually activated at the output. Okay, so we will see how we will do a truth table to 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 see why Y4 will be activated. So this Y4 is now connected to the chip enable pin of this memory, which is 4K times 8. Okay. Uh, so, 4K means 4096, which is 2 to the power 12. So, it should have 12 address pins and that is A0 to A11. Okay. So, these 12 address pins are directly connected to A0 to A11 of the microcontroller address bus and A12 to A15 is connected to the input of this decoding IC like this banner. Okay. And then the data bus directly comes to the data pins of the IC and, and then these are the other uh, pins of the memory chip uh, output enable and VPP. So they are uh, connected in this manner. Okay. So, so now with this example that you have here, let us see the truth table. So, so you have let us say let us say these are your ABCs and then if your G2A bar is high, okay, this pin, okay, and then irrespective of all the other pins, uh, those are do not care, the, all the outputs will be high, okay. So, so, but these are all active lows, so when any of this is low, then this is getting enabled okay the, so this this is something which is not let's say enabling the the um, external memory to which the output is connected if it is high now let's say if g2a okay if g2b is high let's say and any of the other output uh, sorry inputs uh, they are don't care then also all the outputs will be high okay and finally if g1 is low okay uh, irrespective of what the status of the other inputs then also you have all the outputs to be high okay okay so now uh, so these are the all the high output scenarios okay and high output means uh, whatever memory is connected that will not be a, a activated because this is active low. Okay. So, now let us say the combination let us say G2A bar G2B bar. So, these are active low. So, if these are low and G1 is high and then all the A, B, C's are low then you have Y0 as low. So, whatever is connected to Y0 that will be activated. 
okay then low low high so now from here onwards you see all the combinations of this g 2 a bar g 2 b bar and g 1 is low low and high. So, the this is active low this is active low. So, these two are uh, fixed at a low value and this is active high. So, this is fixed at a high value. So, these these are the working modes uh, for this three pins three input pins and then for the other inputs a b c depending on whether they are all low or let us say 0 0 0 then y 0 is active because the output should be active low. So, the low output means this is active. Now, if it is 1 0 0 then y 1 is active. Okay. So, basically when this g 2 a bar g 2 b bar and g 1 let me rewrite this truth table in a different way. So, when these are let us say low, low and high, okay. so this condition that let it be fixed and then if you write C, B and A like this, then if it is 0, 0, 0, then this is a logic 0. So, Y 0 is activated. If this is 0, 0, 1, then y 1, okay. if this is 0 1 0 then y 2, if this is 0 1 1 then y 3 and so on. And that is what is here you can verify from this original truth table. So, when if you read from this side to this side let us say when C B A is 0 0 1 then y 1 is active. So, low means active because this is an active low. So, then again let us say 0 1 0. So, in that case y 2 is active. Then let us say um, 0 1 1. Okay. In that case y 3 is active. So, in that way from this state onwards of g 2 a, g 2 b and g 1 basically whatever is the pattern of c b a that equivalent output is activated okay. and then uh, whatever uh, is connected to those output that particular memory chip will be activated. So, in this example y 4 is connected. So, y 4 will be activated. Okay. Uh, so, so, now let us analyze it further. Okay. So, let us uh, let us look at the design in figure below and find the address range for the following. Okay. So, so it is the same uh, same design okay, that we had and then what will be the address range of y 4, y 2 and y 7 let us say. Okay. So, for y 4 the address range for y 4 is calculated as follows. Okay. So, you have a 15, A 14, A 13, A 12. So, these are uh, these are connected like this. Okay. So, so, your A 15 has to be 0 because it is connected to this G 2 A bar which is active low. Okay. So, A 15 has to be 0. So, this one is 0 okay. and then uh, let us say your A 14. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, this one is grounded and this one is V C C. So, uh, let me see. So, this one is uh, this one is 0, this one is 0, this one is 1 okay. and then uh, based on this. Okay. So, C B A Okay. To activate y 4 okay, your C B A has to be 1 0 0. So, this is the binary equivalent of the logic uh, of, of the decimal 4. Okay. So, C B A has to be 1 0 0 and G 2 A, G 2 B and G 1 should be uh, low, low and high. 
okay. So, your A 15 has to be low. So, A 15 is 0 and your C B A is A to A 14, 13, 12. So, A 15 is 0, A 14, 13 and 12 that has to be 1 0 0 because C B A has to be 1 0 0 to activate Y 4. Okay. So, basically A 15 to A 12 has to be 0 1 0 0 this is fixed. Okay. So, that is what is shown here 0 1 0 0 and then from A 11 to A 0 it can range between this all 0 case to all 1 case. Okay. So, therefore, the range for Y 4 is basically 4 0 0 0 to 4 f f f f. So, this is 4 and then this is all zeros and then this is again 4 and this is f f. Okay. So, 4 0 0 0 to 4 f f f. Okay. So, so that is the way to find out the address range. Okay. So, for y 2 then what will be the address range for y 2? So, for y 2 to be active your a 15 to a 14 to a 13 to a 0 I mean these 4 uh, bits has to be in this pattern 0 0 1 0 okay, because you are activating y 2. So, this has to look like the binary 2 0 0 1 0. Okay. These 3 are C B A of the of the IC okay the the CBA input pins of the IC and this is uh, G2 uh, A15 is G2A bar so this has to be this pattern 0 0 1 0 and then the remaining A11 to A10 can be all zeros to all ones so this will correspond to 2000H to 2FFFH okay with the similar logic we can find out for Y7 you know you have to have this pattern for a 15 to a 12 and then a 11 to a 0 can be all zeros to all ones. So, then that will range for as 7 0 0 0 to 7 f f f. Okay. So, in that way you can see that each output of your IC of your 7 4 L S 1 3 8 can serve a specific range of the memory. So, Y 2 uh, can serve this to this, Y 4 can serve this to this and Y 7 can serve between this to this. So, each of these output can serve a certain range in this memory. Okay. So, so this is something which is uh, important and interesting to note actually. Um, so, let us move on. So, uh, the memory address decoding using programmable logic. So, this is uh, the third option. So, this is uh, this is another widely used decoders. Uh, so, these are called programmable logic chips or PAL uh, and, and GAL. Okay. So, one dis disadvantage of these chips is that one must have access to a PAL slash GAL software and burner. Okay. Whereas, this 74LS138, it does not need any of these. Okay. So, advantage of these chips is that they are much more versatile since they can be programmed for any combination of address ranges okay so so you have you have an advantage you have a disadvantage okay so now let's uh, let's look into the actual interfacings now so interfacing with external rom okay so the 8031 this is uh, this is a type of microcontroller which is rom less okay so this is basically a rom less version of the 8051 okay so since it doesn't have a rom you have to interface or you must have to interface this with an external rom so 
so this is like 8031 this is like any member of the 8051 family as far as the instructions and the executions are concerned but it has no on chip rom okay so to make the 8031 execute 8051 code it must be connected to an external rom memory containing the program code okay so 8031 this is ideal for many systems where the on chip rom of 8051 is not sufficient since uh, it allows only 64 kilobytes of uh, program uh, memory okay so so when you are interfacing with the external rom so for 8751 89c51 ds5000 based systems so these are different uh, families of the 8051 microcontroller uh, we connect the ea pin to vcc to indicate that the program code is stored in the microcontrollers on chip rom okay so the ea pin okay so that was activated that was connected to vcc to indicate that the program is stored in the on chip uh, memory uh, so now to indicate that the program is stored in an external rom this ea pin must be connected to ground okay so when you studied about the ea pin you saw that uh, if it is 1 then it indicates that the program is stored in on chip uh, memory and if it is 0 it indicates that the program is stored in the external memory ok. So, so since the program counter of the 8031 or 8051 is a 16 bit so it is capable of accessing up to 64 kilobytes of program code ok. So, the program counter is 16 bit and program counter is actually holding the address of the current line of the code. So, it is a 16 bit address. So, total program memory could be 2 to the power 16 or 64 K. Okay. So, in 8031 slash 8051 port 0 and port 2 provide the 16 bit address to access the external memory ok. So, we have discussed this before when we were discussing the function of the address latch enable pin ok. So, uh, and also when we were discussing about ports the functions of the ports we discussed this concept briefly ok. So, basically uh, out of this 16 bit addresses ok port 0 provides the lower 8 bits of these addresses a 0 to a 7 and port 2 provides the upper 8 bits a 8 to a 15. However, port 0 is also used to provide the 8 bit data ok. So, therefore, port 0 has a dual functionality. So, basically it, it is it is used both as address and data. So, there has to be some multiplexing between address and data ok and, uh, and, and address data multiplexing is done by this ALE pin ok. So, this ALE pin when it is 0 it indicates that port 0 is used for the data path when it is 1 then it indicates that port 0 is used for the address path ok. So, to extract the address from the port 0 pins you have to connect port 0 to a 74 ls 373 chip ok and use the ALE pin to latch the address. So, this is basically a latch ok. So, this is how uh, it looks like ok. So, so this is basically this is basically the um, the schematic diagram of the 74 ls 373 ic ok so basically it's uh, it's an 8 bit latch ok so there are 8 uh, d flip flops or latches ok and when your uh, you have a latch enable 
pin also and you have an output enable pin also. So, when your latch enable is high and OE is low, okay, then uh, whatever is your input DN high, the output is high, okay, and when it is low, the output is low. So, when your latch enable and OE uh, is high, high and low respectively, then basically the output which is this line, it follows exactly the input which is this line. So, basically whatever is your DN that is at the output. Okay. Now, if both of these latch enable and OE, both of them are low, then uh, you have at the output the previous input. Okay. So, so this is the Q0 and when you have you have these this is low, this is low and this is high, then you have a high impedance state. Okay. So, this is how this 74 LS 373 this latch works. So, 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 Q0 as I said, this is the level of the output before the steady state input conditions were established. Okay. So, now um, normally your AL is 0 and P0 is used as a data bus sending data out or bringing data in. So, P0 port 0 uh, which is again uh, divided into 8 lines. So, P0.0 to P0.7, they go through this latch 74LS373 okay, and uh, the output of the latch goes to the A0 to A7 or lower 8 bit address bus okay. and the whatever is before the latch. Okay, so, these this goes as the data. Okay. And the ALE is actually uh, used as an activating you know uh, pin to this uh, to this latch. Okay. So, so whenever your ALE is 1, okay, whenever your ALE is 1, this uh, input whatever is the input that goes straight as the output. And at that time, when your AL is 1, this port behaves as the address bus. Okay. But when AL is 0, okay, then this latch is not activated and we have uh, the, the output here at port 0, which is, which is treated as the data. Okay. So, so this is the, this is the arrangement here. So, because of this uh, latch uh, and, and also because of this ALE, you are able to uh, multiplex both address and data together on this port 0. Okay. So, so that was the uh, that was how the address bus and the data buses should be connected okay to the external rom okay so now let's see the other other pins of the microcontroller so psen this signal is an output signal for the 8031/51 microcontroller and must be connected to the output enable pin of the rom okay containing the program code okay and it is also important to emphasize the role of EA and PSEN when connecting this microcontrollers to external ROM. So, when the EA pin is connected to ground, the 8031 slash 51 fetches off code from the external ROM by using this PSEN. Okay. So, the PSEN is connected to this output enable. Okay and also to the chip enable okay and then port 2 is used for the higher 8 bits of the address bus okay a8 to a12 
port 0 is used as a multiplexed port address data multiplexing by help of this ALE and also this latch ok and the data goes directly to the data pins here the output of the latch goes to the address pins A0 to A7 port 2 directly goes to A8 to A12 here ok why up to A12 because this is an 8k ROM ok and we do not need the extra uh, extra address pins A13, A14, A15 ok so so that is why we are only interested up to A12 ok so this is how this external ROM which is 8k times 8 is connected to your microcontroller and and these are the seven different um, connectivities ok so from the microcontroller side to the external ROM uh, side ok so so this is all about your uh, interfacing with the external ROM ok so in general in an 8751 system we could use on chip ROM for boot code and an external ROM will contain the users program ok so earlier you saw that for 8031 which does not have an on chip ROM everything is off chip but for those type of microcontrollers where there is an on chip ROM you keep the boot code ok you keep the boot code in the on chip ROM and the external ROM will contain the users program ok so so here for 8031 ok where you do not have a on chip ROM everything is off chip your EA is set to ground ok but when you have a certain portion of your code on chip you have to set EA equal to VCC so this is the case for 8051 and 8052 ok um, and then let us say between 00 to 0 FFFF you have this much allocated for on chip and then the remainder is off chip in case of 8052 you have 0000, 0, 0, 0 to 1 FFFF um, for on chip and the remainder for off chip ok so whenever you have something on chip um, like you have a ROM on chip you have to set EA equal to VCC if everything is entirely off the chip then EA has to be set to ground so um, so let us talk about the memory space of 8051 a little bit. So the 8051 has 128 kilobytes of address space. So 64 kilobytes are set aside for program code ok and the other 64 kilobytes are set aside for data ok. So the program space is accessed using the program counter to locate and fetch instructions. So you know that by now ok. Uh, you have come across this several times uh, in some example we place data in the code space and use the instruction move c to bring that data ok so where c stands for code so so many of you uh, earlier were used to ask me what is exactly move c doing so move c uh, is basically bringing data that is stored in the code space ok um, and the other 64 kilobytes are set aside for data and the data memory space is accessed using the data pointer register and an instruction called move x. So now probably you can appreciate better this move c and move x instructions ok. So where x stands for external ok. The data memory space must be implemented externally ok. So, um, so we use the RD to connect the microcontroller to the external ROM containing data ok. So for the ROM containing the program code PSEN is used to fetch the code ok. So in this case this is an example of interfacing with external data ROM ok. So earlier you saw an example for 
program ROM. Okay. So, for program ROM, you are connecting this PSEN in this fashion as you have seen here. But in case of your data ROM, you do not use the PSEN, okay. you use this uh, uh, read pin okay. uh, and then you connect it to the output enable here directly of the data ROM chip. Okay. And then uh, you have a kind of address decoding going on here and that is uh, connected to the C pin of this uh, external ROM. Okay. And um, usual arrangements are here P00, I mean 0, 0.0 to 0 0.7 or the 8 uh, pins of port 0, they are used in a multiplexed manner both as you know data and the lower byte of the address and for the higher bytes you have uh, A8 to A12 connected directly and uh, 13, 14, 15 uh, they are used with this decoding circuitry okay. and then the output of the decoding circuitry goes to your chip enable of this external ROM. So, let us focus a little bit more on the move x instruction. So, the move x this is a widely used instruction as you have known by now allowing access to external data memory or uh, to bring externally stored data into the CPU. Uh, we use the instruction move x a and then whatever is stored in the DPTR. Okay. So, let us see an example. So, an external ROM uses the 8051 data space to store the lookup table starting at 1000 hex for uh, DSE data. Okay. Uh, write a program to read 30 bytes of this data and send it to port 1. Okay. So, so, this is straightforward like this type of code you have come across many times, but here it is given just to re-emphasize. Um, the role of move x okay so you are initialize uh, you are initializing the data pointer with the starting address of your data okay which you are defining like this my x data and that starting address is 1000h according to this problem and then you have to bring 30 bytes so this this is a counter that you are initializing and then you are moving that count to R2 and then you are fetching the data from the starting address and incrementing the DPTR and repeating this entire operation again and again. Okay. So, so that you can bring 30 bytes of data starting from this address okay. and see how move x is used here. Okay. Uh, so, here is a note here. So, both move C and move X look very similar, but one is used to get data in the in the code space and the other is used to get data in the data space of the microcontroller. Okay. So, let us do another example. Show the design of an 8031 based system with 8 k bytes of program ROM and 8 k bytes of data ROM. So, this is an example which basically captures everything that you have learned so far. So, you are uh, connecting the program ROM. So, in case of your program ROM, your PSEN is getting connected to the chip enable and the output enable like this. So, you saw a separate example for this one and for the data ROM, you have uh, the read pin which goes directly to the output enable of the of the memory and then the addresses are you know uh, the higher especially the higher uh, bits of the addresses are are going through this decoding circuitry and then it goes to the chip enable and then the remaining are as usual so a8 to a12 goes directly uh, 
here and uh, the lower 8 bits of the address and the data they are multiplex using this arrangement so again this is uh, this is something which you have seen before so and notice that the data goes to both these uh, both these external chips so one is a data rom the other is a program rom okay so this is a complete interfacing uh, you have seen these two separately interfaced now this is a diagram that gives you the complete interfacing okay so now let's uh, look into the external data ram okay so so far we were looking uh, looking uh, for roms so to connect uh, the 8051 to an external sd ram we must use both this read and the write pin okay because uh, ram is uh, facilitating both read and write operations okay rom was only read Re read only memory as the name suggests so in this case uh, the only change is that you have uh, you have the read pin connected to the oe bar and the write pin connected to we bar and then you have this decoding circuitry and then the rest is same as before as you as you just saw okay so uh, in writing data to external data ram we use the instruction move x and then whatever the dptr is pointing okay and and then the accumulator a is actually storing the data and that data is going to the external address which is pointed by this dptr so let's say uh, we have an example here write a program to read 200 bytes of data from port 1 and save the data in external ram starting at ram location this okay so what is the address space allocated to data ram in figure um, maybe they are talking about this figure okay you have to check anyway let us see so um, the starting location is 5000 and you have to read 2 to 200 bytes so these two initializations are done and then uh, this code is similar to what you saw before so you are uh, initializing the dptr and r3 uh, with the count and then you are getting data from port 1 okay you are moving it to the accumulator and then from the accumulator to the starting location that is pointed by the dptr you are calling some delay here then incrementing the dptr and then you are basically repeating the loop okay and the data address space is um, 8000 to BFFFFX. So, this figure um, probably is this one. Okay, I have to check and let you know. So, you can easily find out the address range by looking into this decoding circuitry, and in the same way, uh, you can work this out. Okay, as you as we have shown before in few examples. So, Sometimes you can you you have a single external ROM for code and data. Okay, so uh, assume that we have an 8031 based systems connected to a single 64k times 8 external ROM chip. So the single external ROM chip is used for both program code and data storage. Okay, so for example, let's say this uh, space between 0000, 0, 0, 0 to 7FFFX is allocated to program code and and the and the remaining space 8000 hex to fffx is set aside for data so in accessing the data we use the move x instruction uh, so to allow the single rom chip to provide both program code space and data space you have to use an and get here okay so um, so your psen and the read they both are connected to the AND gate and then it goes to the 
OE pin of the ROM chip. Okay, so both of these has to be active to activate this ROM chip. Okay, so um, so this in this way this can be facilitated as both uh, our data and program memory. Okay, and the rest of the connections are same as you have seen before. So here you have a latch to multiplex address and data and all these address pins uh, goes directly to the ROM chip. So the only adjustment here is this AND gate which is taking care of both the um, both the functionalities of this ROM as a data memory and the program memory. So, you can also have an 8031 with the RAM and ROM. Okay. So, so again this is one step higher. Uh, so, uh, earlier you saw how to connect a data ROM and a program ROM. Here you are connecting a data ROM, a program ROM and also a data RAM. Okay. So, you have to make the necessary adjustments. So, first of all uh, given that you know how to individually connect this external memories to your microcontroller you can work this out okay uh, step by step so first thing is that the data ram and the data rom both need an address decoder so you can use this 74 ls 138 uh, which has multiple outputs and one of the output go can go to the ram and the other output can go to the rom okay and the in inputs of this decoder has to be properly assigned ok. Um, so, let us say depending on what are the addresses that you can you know access. So, assume that we need an 8031 system with 16 KB of program space, 16 KB of data ROM starting at 0000. 000, 000, 000. So, this is important and 16k of NV RAM starting at 8000. So, this starting address of the data ROM and the data RAM is given. So, in that way you connect you know uh, which of the outputs of this 74LS138 should be connected to this RAM and ROM that is given by this information the starting addresses. So, in that way you can work this out again. Uh, we did an example uh, before in this video lecture uh, to find out what are the addresses each of these output will activate. So, from that you can figure out and it happens to be Y2 and Y0. So, Y0 goes to the data ROM and Y2 goes to the data RAM. Okay. So, this part is taken care of. Now, for the program ROM you have this PSEN that goes directly in this fashion. So, this is the way to connect a program ROM and uh, and, and then the, the rest is uh, straightforward. So, you have the address data multiplexing for port 0 with the help of this latch and every data pin goes to the data inputs of this external uh, memories and every address I mean the lower uh, byte of the address goes to the address pins of course through this uh, through this multiplexing arrangement and the higher uh, bits of the addresses uh, they go to the address pins directly A8 to A13 and 14 and 15 is used for the decoding circuitry. So, this again this diagram actually captures everything that you have learnt so far in this uh, lecture. Okay. So, now uh, one last thing that remains so interfacing to large external memory. So, in some applications you would need a large amount of memory to store data. Okay. Uh, so, in that case your 16 bit address might not be uh, enough okay to so to solve this problem okay you connect a0 to a15 uh, the 16 address pins of 8051 directly to the external memories a0 to a15 and use some of the port 1 pins to access uh, 
uh, the 64k bytes uh, inside a single 256k times 8 memory chip ok. So, so this is uh, how it is done this example will clarify this. So, let us say in a certain application you need 256 kilobytes of NVRAM to store data collected by an 8051 microcontroller. So, you have to show the connection of an 8051 to single 256k times 8 RAM chip and show how various blocks of this single chip are accessed. So, since it is 256k, okay, it should have 18 address pins. Okay. So, you need A0 to A17 and 256k times 8. So, this 8 stands for 8 data lines. Okay, so, A0 to A15 go directly to the memory chip. Okay, uh, I have the figure in the next slide, I will show you. So, A0 to A15 go directly to the memory chip while A16 and 17 are controlled by port 1.0 and 1.1. Okay. And also, the chip select of the external RAM is connected to port 1.2 of the 8051. Okay. And the 256 bytes of memory that you have are divided into 4 blocks and each of them are 64k each. Okay. So, these blocks are accessed as follows. So, let us say port 1.2 is your chip select, port 1.1 is A17 and port 1.0 is A16. So, if these 3 pins are all 0, 0, 0, then the block address space is this to this. Okay. Uh, if this is 0, 0, 1, then you have uh, 10,000 to 1 F triple F, uh, 0, 1, 0 is 20,000 to 2 F triple F and 0, 1, 1 is 30,000 to 3 F triple, triple F. And if A17, uh, sorry, if P1.2 is 1, then the external RAM is disabled because P1.2 is your chip select and chip select is an active low pin. So, if it is 1, then it becomes inactive. Okay. So, now here is the final diagram. So, as you can see from port 0 0.0 to 0 0.7, you have these 8 lines which is used for the lower byte of the address and also the data. So, this is the usual multiplexing case with this uh, with this latch and the ALE pin. And then uh, port 2 is used for A8 to A15 that goes directly to A8 of, uh, to A15. Okay. So, you can see A0 to A15 goes directly to the external RAM and then 1.1, 1, .1, 1 uh, sorry 1.0, 1 1.1 1 .1 is used as A16 and A17 and 1.2 is used as chip select. So, uh, chip enable or chip select and then 3.6, 3.7 are used for this uh, output enable and write enable part. Okay. So, uh, as simple as that. Okay. And then uh, we already discussed in the previous slide that based on this uh, combination of P1.2, 1.1 and 1.0, you have these uh, different address spaces that you can you can handle. Okay. So, that is it for this video lecture. So, I will stop here and we will see you in the next video lecture. Thank you.